Hello, hello, welcome to Caffeinate Math. I'm Mrs. Saunders. Today's video is brought to you by Wales, and it's the second in a three-part series on rational numbers. In the first video, I took you back in time to ancient Egypt, and we saw how the concept of fractions grew from this like crazy eye-looking thing to what we know of today. In this lesson, we're simply going to apply the concept of opposites and absolute value to rational numbers. And just a side note, if you haven't covered opposites or absolute value yet, you can go watch those videos first. Okay, shall we dive in? Let's go. We'll begin by reviewing a few definitions. First of all, what's a rational number? A rational number is any number that can be written in the form of a over b, as long as a and b are both integers and b does not equal zero. Okay, what about opposites? Well, two numbers are opposites if they are the same distance from zero on the number line, but on different sides of zero. And finally, absolute value. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. So with those things in mind, let's see how rational numbers fit into all of this. We'll start with the concept of opposites. In the opposites lesson, we looked at pairs of integers, such as negative four and four. But how do we plot fractions on the number line? Well, let's zoom in. Between every integer is a whole host of numbers. Check out these two, negative one and a half and one and a half. Hey, wait a second. That's not in the form of a over b. Oh, but it can be. Either way is fine. Here's another example. How would you plot this pair? Negative three and two thirds and three and two thirds. Okay, there we go. And can we squeeze in one more? Yes, okay. Let's try one in decimal form. Negative 4.5 and 4.5. What would that look like? There we go. So we've covered the concept of opposites and rational numbers. Now, what about absolute value? As you already know, the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. And even fractions have a distance. So let's try the absolute value of negative 5.5. I'm going to use decimal form, but remember, 5.5 can also be written as 5 and a half or 11 halves. So let's see, um, negative 5.5 sits right about here. Just like we did in the absolute value lesson, we can just count the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, and half of another one. So the absolute value of negative 5.5 is 5.5. One more, let's look at the absolute value of six and one fourth which could also be written as 6.25 or 25 over four. Let's see, six and a fourth sits right about here. Counting the spaces, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and just a quarter of the next one. And the absolute value of six and a fourth is six and one fourth. So that's it, you guys. It was a very quick video today because all we had to do was add the concept of rational numbers to what we already knew about opposites and absolute value. And I was just thinking, if the ancient Egyptians used the eye of Horus to denote fractions, how would they have dealt with absolute value? Hmm, I'll let you ponder that one today.